If you're working on a UI for a backend API that isn't ready yet, you can use Mockaroo to mock out that backend API using the new APIs feature. So imagine we're working on a UI for managing users. Our backend API might have these simple CRUD operations that almost API, every API has. So for example, uh, a get request to slash users.json lists all users, posting creates a new user, get users slash one.json gets user one, patch updates user one, and delete would delete user one. So let's see how we can mock out these routes using Mockaroo. So if you're not familiar with Mockaroo, um, most people use Mockaroo to just generate uh, random realistic data sets. And you do that by creating a schema. Uh, I've saved the default schema that you see when you come to Mockaroo uh, as a schema called users. So it has some basic information that might be like what you would store in a user account. So now I'm going to start mocking out the actual API routes. To do that, go over to our APIs tab and we click create a new mock API. So let's start with our list route, which is going to list all users in the system. So we need to change the URL here and we can pick uh, a method. So we're going to use get. And then this box contains a handler script that gets run whenever this URL is called. Uh, and so actually the default handler script is pretty much what we need. Uh, what's happening here is we're specifying we're using the user schema that we've saved and we're going to generate 10 records uh, from that schema. So I can click create API to save that. And then if I want to try that out, there's two ways I can try it. I can either click this link and it will try it right in the browser or to simulate more of more realistic um, connection, you can copy and paste this curl URL, uh, curl command into a command prompt, and you'll see it issue the request and get the response back, the same response. Okay, uh, a few things to note. Um, you always have to pass your API key, which is listed here with each request. It can either be passed on the URL or as an XAPI key header, as is done with a curl request. Um, and there's also uh, a handy listing of all of the functions available to you in your handler script uh, here, as well as some other um, examples like how to generate errors or simulate error conditions, um, how to alter the response um, to take maybe some of the parameters passed in on the URL and map them to values in the response. Um, we'll see more of that in a moment. Okay, so now we have our get users route. Let's go and create our post user route um, to create a new user. Now, this is all just simulating, right? So we're not actually creating a user in the system. It's just going to return uh, random data that makes it look like we created a user. Uh, again, it's just for stubbing out a backend API so that you can work on your front end uh, while you're waiting for the backend API to be ready. So let's create a new API for our post. Let's change that to post. Just remove the ID variable. And so this time, instead of, um, instead of generating 10 users in an array, let's just generate one. So the idea being that you would post this URL and then you would get back the saved record. So we'll click Create API. And then we can preview the result here. And here you see it's just going to return uh, an object, um, a single object, not an array. Um, and you notice that you know, with the browser, when you click a link like that, it's always doing a get request. But there's a special parameter that you can provide to override the default method, uh, underscore, underscore method. Um, so that's how we're doing it in the browser. And then if you do it with curl, uh, it actually makes a real post request. So I can go and run that and you'll see the record come back with a real post. Okay, so we have uh, get and post. Um, let's make our uh, fetch request for one user record. So to do that, we'll create another new API. And this time the actual default URL is what we need. Um, and you'll notice 
it's got a variable in the URL path. Uh, this is a popular format for many routing technologies. Basically what it says is uh, the thing that will be passed in on the real URL in this place will become the ID param that you'll be able to access in your handler script. And I'll show you how to do that. So this time we're just going to generate one user again. But instead of just returning it, and the last value in the handler script is what's returned back, um, let's put that in a variable called data, and then let's set the ID in the data to the ID that's passed in. So we'll call that, um, it's all, all the URL parameters are accessible in this params hash, and that's how we access one of them. Okay, so I'll save that. And then now, um, the URL that it creates here automatically sticks one, two, three in for any URL parameter. So if we click that link, um, sorry, it's only returning the ID param and not the actual generated record because I didn't say data is the thing that's returned. So I just make that the last line, save our changes, and then go back and refresh. And you'll see now the ID is always going to be set to one, two, three. So it kind of mimics more closely actually fetching record one, two, three, even though the data itself will be randomized every time. Okay, so moving on, um, we have our patch request. Let's create another new API. This time it'll be patch, same URL. Um, we can, again, do the same trick where we hard code the uh, ID that's being returned. So data ID equals params ID. Um, and let's go a little further. So remember to return data this time. <clears throat> let's see how we can actually grab data off of the entity body that's posted. Um, so typically in a patch or a post request, you would send like some JSON in the body of the request, and that would be what actually gets saved in the database. Um, so let's pick one of our um, let's pick one of our uh, uh, fields here, and we're going to hard code that in the response. So the way that you get at the uh, entity, so we're going to use first name data dot first name equals use the entity variable, which is uh, listed here, it's a hash, and basically it's hash of everything that's passed in um, in the post body. So we're going to just take uh, first name off of the entity and assign that there. And when you use the entity in your handler script, the curl URL that it generates automatically sticks in a value called test um, for uh, any parameter that you pull off of the entity. So copy that, save our API, and then when we run this, you'll see it's always going to return first name test. Um, so this ability to access the URL params in the entity really opens up a lot of possibilities for different conditional processing in your APIs. Um, for example, you could um, do something like in the example here, um, decide if one of the parameters passed in doesn't meet certain criteria, set an error status on the response, and then return some kind of a JSON object that would indicate an error, whatever your API would normally do. Um, and so this handler script, uh, basically it's Ruby code. So almost anything you can do in Ruby, you can do in this handler script. Um, and we add in uh, a few handy API methods uh, that are only available in this script. Okay, so last but not least, uh, delete. So we'll go back, create our last API. That's delete. Uh, the URL is already correct. And this time, just to show how we can hard code a response if we want, rather than generating random data, let's just respond with success true. So now, that's what we're going to get all the time. So it just simulates um, success. 
Okay, so I hope um, that this is a feature that everybody finds useful. I think it's going to be very important for Makaru. I think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, if you're going to use the API, uh, I recommend that you upgrade to either the silver or the gold plan. Um, it's free to try, but you're limited to 200 requests per day uh, with free accounts. So uh, it's enough for you to figure out whether or not it works for you and meets your needs, but if you're going to be doing any kind of larger scale testing, um, then you're probably going to need to upgrade. And I think the price is actually very affordable. If we go to the API reference, you can see the limits. Um, you can generate up to 1 million records a day for the silver plan, which is only $50 a year. And I think if you compare that to other services out there, even the cheap ones, uh, Makaru is probably going to be the least expensive way to mock out data. Plus, you've got this really powerful engine for generating realistic data uh, that many people have already been using for years. So, um, hope you take a look. Um, give it a try. We have a community forum um, that you can get to here where you can ask questions. Um, or you can just contact support if you have any issues. Um, look forward to talking to you. Bye-bye.